All right, so this is just a really quick introduction to the main parts and materials that we're going to be using for our VEX robotics unit. All right, so it'll be split into four main parts, or yeah, four main parts, um, parts for motion, metal parts for framework, hardware, that's like your screws, bolts, and nuts, and then equipment, um, that'll be the tools. There could also technically be a section here for um, electrical components, but we're just going to mix that in with the parts for motion. Okay, so first we're going to be looking at the parts in general. Um, we're going to be using the parts from the quote-unquote Clawbot kits. This is what VEX provides. Um, for the most part, our materials will come from the Clawbot kits, but we also have some additional materials that we've um, accumulated over the years in our department, so we kind of have a mix and match of materials, but overall it's mostly Clawbot materials. Okay, so for the for the most part, these are the materials we're going to be using. We have some different types of wheels and gears, um, some strafing wheels and some smaller wheels um, for for your options as well. Um, but for the most part, this is what we're going to be using. As you can see, there's some metal framework. We have a lot of um, nuts and bolts, a few m motors, servo motors. Uh, we'll take a peek um, to see what those look like on the inside at the end of this slideshow. And then you have your gears and your um, tools up top there. Um, you also see a picture of what the generic claw bot looks like. We are not going for that. We're going to have different. We're going to have different tasks and different requirements for our robot to accomplish for this unit. So we're really actually not going to be using the claws for this unit. Okay, moving on. All right. So our first part for motion is the motor. And this is really just a servo motor. You'll we'll look on the inside. You'll see there's a little servo on the inside with gears. And uh, I want you to pay attention to this shape right here because this is going to be important um, for a slide in the future. All right. Um, this is what connects our motor to the quote-unquote brain on our robot. Now this is the motor controller, and this is the brain I was just referencing to. So this is what really um, controls all the motors um, for our for our robot, and this is what the battery will connect to as well. Here's the battery, and they last a, a good amount of time. It'll be enough for our class needs. Um, these are. The gears that we'll be using, these will connect to our arms, any of our moving parts, wheels, things of that nature. Anything that we want to move. Here are some of the options that we'll have for wheels. We also are going to have some strafing wheels. And also we'll have tracks. So those are not pictured here, but we're going to have strafing wheels. And we're going to be also have the option for tracks. Here is everything really connected. It's a good example here. You get to see the quote unquote brain, the battery, the mode the motors would be underneath this metal gear here. And you see the controllers, the motor controllers here connecting the motors to the brain just like we said before. Looks like they have some sort of sensor here in the front, but we're not going to be using that for this unit. And then, of course, you see the gears here connecting to the wheels so they can all move in unison with the motors. Awesome. And it looks like we only see two, we only see two motor controllers here, so that means there would only be two motors being used, right? Awesome. So we were just talking about this, um, how we connect our motors to the gears and wheels. We just saw a picture of it. And remember, I referenced the shape of the hole in the motor on one of the previous slides. So that's where the drive shaft is going to connect. right? And it's going to fit perfectly into the motor. So we're, there's a couple options here for drive shafts, come in a, a couple different lengths. Um, but this is what's going to connect our motors to our gears and to our wheels. 
and other moving components. All right, and so as I said before, I, I wanted to take a peek as to what's going on inside these motors. Um, it's really just a servo there um, with some gears, right? Um, there's some computer components, obviously, because they can connect to the the brain, and they can be programmed, actually, but we're not going to be doing any programming of our robot for this um, unit, not for our intro unit. Awesome, and so let's move on to our metal parts for framework. It's a good idea to get the general idea or the general names for these just so you can better communicate with your team. We have the steel rail. Notice these are the the, the sizes here. Um, steel angle, C channels, and the steel bar or a bendy bar. You'll, you'll, you'll see how you'll be able to bend these um, for your robot's needs. They do come in handy. But again, it's important to learn these names just so you can better communicate with your teacher and with your uh, teammates, just so you know what the robot needs and can move more efficiently. Awesome. So here are our main types of screws that we're going to be using. Pretty self-explanatory. And here are the an, a few more components that help with the hardware. Standoffs. You may not use them for the robot on this unit, um, but they do. They do definitely have their um, importance in, in many different robot setups. Um, for the most part, I think mo for this unit, we'll be using a lot of the Keps nuts and the Nylock nut. That's going to be probably, as you can see, quantity 42 here. It's probably going to be the main nut or main component that you use here with your screws. Awesome. And then the hardware, the uh, shaft collar. So for those that have done VEX robotics before, you know that these are used all the time with the shaft, right? So this is what's going to secure your drive shaft into the motor, into the wheels, into the gears, and it's, it's going to help keep it in place, right? They, as you can see here, there's a little hole in the side. That's where you're going to use a VEX key or an Allen wrench or an Allen key to tighten and loosen them and you don't want to over tighten them because they can become stripped and then you will not be able to remove it from your robot. So again here are the hex keys I was just talking about. Here's our open-ended wrench. <clears throat> we'll have other wrenches as well to use um, but again these, these hex keys are very important. To You're definitely going to get to know these very well. Um, you're you're going to use them for the shaft collars, and you're going to use them for some of the um, screws as well. So get used to using the hex keys, that's for sure. All right, also, we're going to be able to use the 3D printers for this unit as well. So if there is a need for your robot to have an extra component or an extra part that is not provided to you with the VEX materials that I just listed, then you are welcome to... Figure it out with your team what you need, how you're going to design it. Then you can design on Tinkercad, and then I'll print it off on the printers on my end. Awesome. So moving forward, we're going to continue with our background research on VEX, and then we're going to connect that research with the objectives for a robot. That'll be about two classes. Then we're going to go into planning the design of the robot after hearing what we need the robot to do and connecting that with our materials list, and that'll be our Criterion B planning. Again, that'll also be two, about two classes. Third step is the build and test of the robot, right? Also two classes. And then we're going to evaluate and reflect on the performance of the robot and the performance of the team. That's our criterion D, and that'll be about one class. All right. Perfect.